welcome to lecture number 40 of uh, groundwater hydrology course. Uh, today we will talk about this modeling and management of groundwater. Under this, uh, the topic that we will cover in this particular lecture is groundwater surface water interaction. In lecture 39, in, uh, we have talked about this conjunctive subsurface modeling uh, with surface water uh, for overland flow case and we have already talked about this weather zone flow thing. So, in this particular lecture, we will talk about Uh, ground water surface water interaction. So, uh, let us consider one shallow aquifer. shallow aquifer and we have ground surface and then we have one stream there. So, this is the direction of flow for the stream. So, flow and let us say that this is our water table and uh, this is the stage height in your stream and this is the water level in the nearby aquifer which is again shallow aquifer or unconfined aquifer. In this case there will be flow from your ground water table towards the stream and the aquifer will contribute some amount of water in stream. So, again we have unsaturated zone here. And this is basically uh, top cover, so grass cover or any other kind of cover is there on both the sides. So, this is the situation where our aquifer is contributing in the stream. So, we can say that this is basically gaining stream that means stream is gaining from our aquifer. Now, if you see the water table contour for this particular aquifer then uh, it will be uh, some kind of interesting thing because there will be deviation of water table contour if there is a uh, stream in between uh, a particular aquifer region. So, let us say that this is my whole domain now 
Now, I have contour of different uh, hydraulic head level. So, let us say this is level 70, 60, this is 50. Now, uh, we have a stream here which is starting from this point. Now, if you have that contour near to this stream, there will be some deviation. So, this is uh, corresponding to 30, this is corresponding to 20 level. Now, if we draw one arbitrary line here, so we will see that in aquifer uh, region, your uh, ground water table is not deviating this is uh, ground water flow line which will be perpendicular to this. So, this is basically ground water flow line and these are water table contours. So, in this case uh, let us say we have two points A and B. So, starting from A uh, if we move towards this stream, then we will find that there is deviation and this contour is pointing towards the upstream direction. So, uh, in line cross section the water table is at a lower elevation uh, at the interest uh, section point and in this case we can say that our ground water contours will point upstream in a gaining stream. Similarly, if we see the thing for losing stream where things are similar, but only difference is the water level in our aquifer and stream. 
So, this is our ground surface. Now, this is the water level and water table in the aquifer is lower than the aquifer uh, the level of water in the stream. So, this is our water table So, there will be movement of water from stream towards the aquifer. So, we can say that this is our losing stream like gaining stream if we draw the contour levels we will see the opposite thing compared to our uh, gaining stream. So, let us say this is our stream direction and then this is our control level. So, we have this 100, 90, 80, 70 uh, water table contours. So, in this case if we draw straight line as we have drawn it for gaining stream, we will find that this contour will uh, point towards the downstream direction and that is at the intersection point with the stream. So, we can say that in this case our ground water flow is like this which is away from our uh, stream flow direction. This is ground water flow line So, in this case we can say that if the contour point downstream the point uh, the contour point downstream so uh, this is losing stream. So, difference between losing and gaining stream is that the ground water flow line in case of our gaining stream was towards the stream, but in case of our uh, this losing stream this is away from the stream. So, another special case uh, of losing stream may be there uh, which is uh, some kind of extreme situation 
for the stream aquifer interaction. So, in this case this is the flow direction and we have again that shallow water aquifer and water table is below uh, the bed level of the stream. So, in this case water table is below So, there will be contribution of flow from our stream and this kind of situation will be there due to excessive pumping in uh, aquifer region. So, this is basically disconnected disconnected stream so in disconnected streams we have groundwater table uh, which is below the uh, stream this is our stream and this is our stream bed level. So, this is always below the stream bed level. So, these are called as disconnected streams. Now, we need to see uh, what kind of fluid dynamics is there near to stream and that is in our aquifer part. So, in this one if we draw one arbitrary uh, cross section cross section. So, in this one we can divide this whole region this is near to stream this is pointing towards stream and this is towards our land. Now, if we divide this the whole thing into three regions that is A, B, C. So, in this region the behavior of the uh, total head is different. Let us first draw the water table for this cross section. So, near to this land there will be sharp change in the contours. Let us say this is 120, this is 110 and this is near to that 60 again 
some 70, 80, 90, this is 90, then 100. So, in this region there is vertical flow, almost vertical flow in this part of the uh, uh, cross section. This is zone C or we can say this as zone. So, next part there will be almost vertical contours. So, these are 40, 30 and from there let us say again there is change in the pattern and now in this region A things are not that vertical. There is again curve kind of contours which will be available. So, in region B there will be horizontal movement of water and in this region there will be movement of water in upward direction. Now, if we install piezometers in these three different regions, then we will see what is the difference in hydraulic head that we will observe. So, let us say that we are installing piezometric heads here then it will correspond to the water level here then if, if you are installing piezometers here so it will exactly level uh, with the water table and if we further go down then there will be again lowering of the piezometric level. So, let us say this are region C prime. So, with zone C this C prime is nested monitoring locations and in this nested monitoring locations we can see that for a monitoring well in this region there will be a equivalent water surface which will correspond to this level. Again for monitoring well uh, in this region there will be equivalent water surface which will be corresponding to this level and this is at the top surface. So, this will correspond to uh, our uh, original water level, but interesting part is that almost uh, in two cases we have found that for a particular region or piezometric head is lower than the water table at that location. In this case if we try to draw the thing then we will see that this is almost static even if we go down there will not be that much change in the water uh, level in the piezometers. So, this is almost same because vertically there is no variation in contours. 
in this region that is region A. So, this thing we can denote it as B prime. Now, in C prime region, so or else we can denote it with piezometers with this red thing. So, in this region A, let us say that we have one nested network of A prime. So, if we install piezometers here, what we will observe? Observation is that our water surface or piezometric head will be above water table. So, we can say that there will be uh, in first case this is uh, lower than our water table, this is almost similar to water table, there is not much deviation, but in this case it is higher. So, if we can install piezometers here, so there will be spontaneous uh, water flow from these piezometers and uh, if we have deep wells in topographic depressions uh, particularly in river valleys then uh, the water will spontaneously come out and that is uh, which is known as artesian wells and when water is discharged naturally to the surface and discharge point is called as springs. So, artesian wells, if we install wells and the water comes out spontaneously, then we say that this is artesian well and if the water comes out naturally uh, to the surface, then we say that these are springs. Another most important uh, point that is bank storage. What is the effect of uh, bank storage on groundwater surface water interaction? Bank storage effect. So, if we draw it, you will see that uh, with our shallow groundwater aquifer, these are our ground surface. In this case, water level which is this and interestingly, this is our water table during base flow. So, points A and B are there. So, what is this bank storage? We have flow direction. And we have high stage here. 
bank storage occurs when the water level elevation in a surface water body increase beyond the ground water elevation in the adjacent banks. So, uh, we have flow direction, then we have high stage. So, there will be movement of water in this direction. Through banks, there will be movement of water towards the aquifer. So, this is called as uh, uh, bank storage. This is water table at high stage. Interestingly, uh, there will be movement of water from bank uh, uh, from stream towards these banks and there will be elevation of water table and uh, after some time when it reaches, uh, the, when the balance equilibrium reaches in the system, there will be uh, higher water table near to uh, stream compared to this lower uh, ground water table. Uh, during base flow and uh, in that equilibrium condition uh, still beyond this point A and B there will be movement of water from uh, these uh, beyond these two points in this direction. This is very complex in nature and uh, water near the stream uh, in that case, water near the stream uh, moves uh, towards the stream, but uh, it is beyond this A and B points, which are intersection points uh, during high stage uh, levels in streams, there will be movement of water towards the aquifer. So, these are the direction of water flow situation. So, if you want to model this thing in a practical situation, then uh, we need to idealize this particular system with some uh, simplified uh, assumptions. Now, let us see that we have some aquifer and in that one we have some rectangular uh, stream channel so in that rectangular stream channel Let us say this is groundwater level, and there is one region near to this channel that is 
river bed sediment on both the sides and let us say this is our water level. So, with respect to our datum which is below this system, let us say this is our x coordinate system, this is y coordinate system and this is in the direction of that stream, this is L and the saturated thickness in this one is taken as M uh, H M and water table from predefined datum is H and Z 0 this is elevation of the stream bed level from uh, the datum and this is width of the channel B and this is height of water in the channel and we have thickness del Z prime uh, is the thickness of bottom sediment along the weighted perimeter of the channel. So, with this configuration uh, we can write our governing equation for uh, stream flow we can write the equations as Z del V by del L plus V del Z by del L plus del Z by del T equals to Q L and Q V divided by B. So, here Q V is the flow into the channel per unit width uh, per unit length through its weighted perimeter and Q L is the lateral inflow uh, per unit length over the channel banks uh, and from tributaries. And again uh, we need to have the momentum equation So, this S naught is the bed slope and S f is the friction slope. So, this is for stream flow. Now, we need to write the equation for ground water flow. So, ground water flow in unconfined aquifers uh, will have a different thing. So, in that one dot T del H equals to S del H by del T plus Q V B plus 2 Z which is weighted perimeter uh, of the channel. Now, uh, this is uh, valid for the lower part of the channel and governing equation for the other part that will be K which is hydraulic conductivity, this is H m, this is saturated thickness of the aquifer 
HM, then del H, this is SY or specific yield. In this case, this is uh, storage coefficient and this is specific yield for the aquifer and there will be coupling between this uh, equation, this equation, this one and this one that is continuity momentum for uh, saturated uh, confining portion and unconfined portion uh, that will be coupled by Darcy's law. And this is QV P two Z. This is Darcyan flux. QV is the flow into the uh, channel per unit length through its weighted perimeter. So we can say that this is uh, the Darcyan flux. And Darcyan flux uh, left hand side, uh, large Darcyan flux right hand side. We should have hydraulic conductivity and uh, this is hydraulic gradient. What is hydraulic gradient here? Z plus Z naught, this is the total uh, head for stream and we have head here that is H for any arbitrary location. Then we have this del Z prime that is the uh, difference between these two. So, we can say that this is our hydraulic gradient and it is a coupling our all the equations. Then to solve it we need certain boundary conditions for open channel flow or river flow or stream flow, we can either specify stage or discharge at upstream location and we need to specify stage discharge relationship for downstream location. So, this is for stream uh, thing and for aquifers we will consider the whole region as impermeable. So, we have stream here which is flowing like this and this part this is our x and this is our y axis. So, this is basically del h by del y this is 0. In this case, this is del h by del x is 0. Here also, we have del h by del x equals to 0. So, we can choose uh, a very large region and we can put that uh, hydraulic head change to 0. That way we can manage the uh, boundary conditions. The initial condition for stream flow uh, are depth and velocities. So, depth and velocity that should be uh, known for initial condition and uh, with this configuration we can get the variation. So, variation will be like this where this is our upstream direction
and this is our downstream portion so for any flood wave uh, there will be a change in the uh, hydraulic head in the aquifer uh, with the change in the uh, peaks uh, of flood wave. So, if we draw one uh, simple figure maybe for some intermediate point here, then we will see that if this is our hydraulic head, then for flood hydrograph with no leakage, this is positive direction, this is negative and this is change in stream discharge from steady state flow condition. So, this is flood hydrograph uh, this is without or no leakage. So, there will be change in the uh, uh, change in this let us consider this is with no leakage. So, it will merge here and with leakage there will be reduction this green line and if we consider the effect of leakage then we will see this difference uh, will plot it in this so this will be the same so this is basically the effect of leakage so the net effect of uh, leakage or net effect of bank storage, this is bank storage or we can say that effect of leakage leakage is our bank storage. Now, we can have uh, other situations where our pumping uh, will influence pumping will influence the whole thing 
So, let us say that we have a region now this is our ground surface and this is our water table uh, which is matching here. This is uh, confined bed water table. So, there will be flow from this direction towards the stream. This is actually our stream and this is ground surface or land surface. So, there will be movement towards this stream. Now, if you place some wheel here, interestingly with small amount of pumping, there will be water divide and again there will be movement on this side, also this side, but it will be in normal direction. But if we have some amount of heavy pumping, then it will be directly connected with the it will be directly connected with the stream uh, stage and we will see a different uh, water uh, drawdown in the pumping well. This is pumping. So, these are the effects uh, of aquifer on the stream and there is a reverse effect of the stream on aquifers. So, amount of pumping also dictates the water divide. So, in, in, in the second case where we can have some amount of water divide for low pumping value, but for high pumping value this will be directly connected with the stream level. So, this aspect is important because our aquifers can directly influence the stream water level. So, there is always interaction between uh, streams and aquifers. Most importantly, if you have two reservoirs, let us say that uh, one reservoir is uh, leaving water at certain rate, another reservoir is leaving uh, at, at a different rate. So, in between if there is too much extraction, so in stream there will not be much water available. So, this is the total effect of stream water uh, aquifer interaction, uh, this ends uh, this lecture number 40.